Throughout California, the year 1812 was known as El Año de los Temblores, or the year of the earthquakes. On December 8th, a quake centered on the San Andreas Fault near Wrightwood struck with a magnitude of about 7.5. Small tremors were felt, but no damage occurred at La Parisima, though other missions such as San Juan Capistrano faced casualties as the adobe structures collapsed. As it came to be known, the San Juan Capistrano quake was followed by another large seven magnitude event on December 21st at approximately 10.30 a.m. near Santa Barbara. It destroyed the Mission Santa Barbara Church, and a half hour later at La Parisima, while they were still inspecting the damaged buildings, a violent aftershock followed, ruining the church and other Mission Adobe structures. At La Parisima, several slight shocks between 7 and 8 a.m. on the 8th did no harm. But at 10.30 a.m. on the 21st, the earth shook for four minutes, so violently that it was difficult to stand. A brief examination showed the minister that the church walls had been thrown out of plumb, and half an hour after the first, there came a more violent shock which brought down the church and nearly all the adobe buildings. Several neophytes were wounded, but not killed. A succession of light shocks followed this day and the next, and the work of destruction was completed by the rains that followed and the bursting of the waterworks. The extraordinary and horrible earthquake completely ruined the church destroyed its collateral, several statues and paintings, and spoiled a major part of its decorations. The vestments were not damaged as they were inside the drawers. The building materials, some on the floor, and others, if the damage does not continue, after being much carefully repaired, could serve not for dwellings, but for less hardy use that does not require so much safety. 100 houses of the neophytes in the Pozolera made with walls of adobe and roofed with tile are unserviceable. Even the adobe fence of the garden, though covered with tile, either fell or was knocked down in such a way that there is barely enough material left to use in making replacements. The furniture and possessions of the mission also have suffered. Some crushed, others destroyed, and all damaged. Besides the bad weather and the heavy rain that subsequently fell, there was no opportunity to dig or re-roof that which barely still stands. We shall go to work constructing of poles and grass what is indispensable until the earth becomes quiet. Experience may teach us the best method of constructing other buildings. The crevice in the hill above Mission Vieja marks the earthquake fault rift. Heavy rains followed the earthquake and water burst through the crack and black sand poured out with it. This was thought to be a very ominous sign and many of the neophytes refused to remain at the site. Because of this, Father Pieris petitioned to relocate the mission about five miles northeast to the mouth of Los Barros Canyon on the same side of the river as El Camino Real. They salvaged everything of value and sorted through the remains to find usable floor tiles, roof tiles, doors, lintels, posts, beams, and rafters. So why did some of the missions only lose some of their structures, while La Parisima was devastated and petitioned to relocate the mission elsewhere? Well, in order to answer that question, we have to back up to the year 1789. There are now 920 souls here, and the number, it is hoped, will be much greater with the favor of God. As the primitive church is not spacious enough to gather in it all the Indians and give them the spiritual food necessary, the missionaries here have seen themselves compelled to lay the foundations for a new church this year. But owing to the entire ignorance of the fathers, there is necessary a master or masters who are experienced in this matter. Otherwise, the work will not be done with sufficient security or stability. But we also do not know whence their pay shall come. Based on observations made in the 1890s, unlike other missions, instead of being six or seven feet thick, the church's adobe walls were barely three feet thick and had to be later reinforced with walls and buttresses. These reinforcements, however, weren't in bond with the original plastered and painted walls. Not exactly the way you want to build a two-storied earthen structure. 
just like any uncovered adobe structure, without roof tiles and lime wash to protect the buildings, the first site of La Purisima began to erode due to weather exposure and moisture. Over the decades, everything left behind disappeared into mounds of soil, rendering it almost unrecognizable. However, other settlers found use for the crumbling walls. Two small ranches were built near the site and used them for corralling livestock. The quadrangle corners were turned into barns and the pozolera was re-roofed for some other use, while the aqueduct was maintained for irrigation. Their new purpose later gave way to new development in the 1930s, as suburban homes were built over the remains of stone foundations and tile floors. Among the remaining recognizable features were the church's stone doorway and a portion of its south wall. Howard Moore and his wife purchased two lots that contained the church's remains and built their home next to the wall section. Across the street, they put up a hand-painted sign next to the church doors. But it wasn't until 1991 that six key lots were purchased by the city, and a giant game of connect the dots began to map out exactly where the first site of La Purisima used to sit. Today, we look back at the first site of the mission as an example of learning from the past, taking tragedy and hardship as an opportunity to reinvent the wheel. So as California's only linear constructed mission, we invite you too to keep on learning from the past and finding a new way forward.